Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Operational Amplifier Limitation in Controller Design. This is actually a follow-up on an earlier video that I had, which was entitled What is a PAD Control? The link to the previous video is given here, and also I've put it on the YouTube page of this present video. Now the subject of this presentation is what is the effect of the amplifier, the transfer function of the real amplifier, of the practical amplifier, on the total transfer function of, say, a controller which is built around it. Now this controller, this particular controller, is a double zero controller. It has two zeros here. And we are primarily interested in this section here for closing the loop. And this is done by actually looking at one over this transfer function, which is shown here. And this all is discussed in the previous video that I'm not going to repeat here. So the first thing is to correct an error that uh, somehow I had in the earlier video. And this uh, C3 has to be changed to C2. This, this is just a small typo. So the first thing I'm going to do is to assume that this amplifier is ideal and then reconstruct the transfer function when, the, when we have these networks uh, around it. Now, in order to simplify the presentation and make it uh, intuitive and not go into too many equations here, uh, I'm going to do some assumptions and then to do some approximation. So the assumption I'm making is that the C2 is much larger than C3, C2 is much larger than C3, R1 is smaller than R2, R1 smaller than R2, and R1 is smaller than R3, R1 is smaller than R3. Okay, so the first thing is we are going to sweep the frequency from very low frequency, so mentally, and go to higher frequency. So under these assumptions, the first thing we have is actually an integrator between C2 and R2. Now, it is assumed that the impedance at low frequency of C2 is much higher than R3, and the impedance of C1 is certainly much higher than um, C2. So therefore, we have here an integrator, and this is the gain of this integrator. This is the gain of the integrator. Now, if you would like to plot this curve, the best thing to do is to look at this point. This is the point when this gain is 1. This is the 0 dB line. So the frequency is 1 over 2 pi C2 R2. And then you can draw this minus 20 dB per decade line. So next thing that happens is as we go to a higher frequency is that the impedance of the C2 capacitor is becoming equal to R3 and at frequency above it, it's actually uh, smaller than that. So R3 has a higher impedance than C2. So we basically have now a inverter. This is R3 over R2. This is the gain here. And the breakpoint is 1 over 2 pi F R3 C2. And then the next thing that happens is that R2, which is this one, is about the impedance of C1, and at the higher frequencies, C1 has a lower impedance than R2. R1 is still lower resistance than C1 impedance, so we end up with a different radiator, which is a derivative here, uh, R3 and C1, which goes up at plus 20 dB per decade. Breakpoint again is here from this thing. And this goes up, and the breakpoint, of course, depending on this relationship, is 1 over 2 pi f c1 r2. Next, we have this relationship that the impedance of c2 here is about r3, and in this case, c2 is becoming a short as compared to the impedance like lower impedance than R3, and we do have again an inverter, which is R3, R1. And finally, C3 comes into effect with the impedance, this is a small capacitor, and the impedance of which now becomes significant, and therefore lower than R3, 
and therefore it prevails and we have then another integrator between C1, C3 and R1 again going down minus 1 dB, dB per decade. So this is the transfer function assuming that this is an ideal amplifier. Now let's go back for a second to the feedback configuration, general feedback configuration that I'm showing here. Here we have a G function, this is a transfer function between the actual input and the summing junction. Then we have the open loop gain of the amplifier and then we have beta which is the uh, feedback path. Now we have two cases, one when beta A is much larger than one, this one is larger than one, then A closed loop is G over beta, which is the transfer function of an ideal amplifier. Ideal amplifier is supposed to have a beta A much, much larger than one. Now, if however beta A is smaller than one, this one is smaller than one, then we have actually the gain of the open loop, which is G times A open loop. So this will be the transfer function when this beta A open loop is smaller than one. Now, if the red plot here, curve here, represent the open loop gain of the amplifier. Now, obviously, we cannot get gains which are higher than this borderline, or this border here. That is, if we find for an ideal amplifier that this is the transfer function, this section here and this section here cannot be supported by the amplifier save the very special case in which we might have a very small phase margin and then in this point here, this is be the crossover frequency, we might have a picking. So let's forget about it, let's assume the phase margin is larger than 45 or 50, so we have no picking and therefore we can say that in a general case you cannot have gains which are outside this borderline. However, you have to take into account G to find out the exact shape of the transfer function. So let's have a look now in the case in which this is the A open loop. This is now the transfer function we found for the ideal amplifier. Now obviously this section here, this line cannot go up and up because we have a limiting gain here. This is, this is the open loop gain of the amplifier, the low frequency open loop gain. The question is, what is the shape of, of the curve here? So, as we have said, the gain is G times A open loop. Okay, A open loop is here. Well, now the question is, what is G? Now, G is the transfer function between the input and the summing junction, which is here. And in this case, we are now relying on C2 and R2. So this would be the impedance of C2 divided by the total impedances. Now this point here, we have the gain very high. 1 over 2 pi FC2 R2 is equal to the A open loop DC. Okay, So here it is, which means that the impedance of the capacitor is much larger than R2, it's R2 over A open loop zero. So therefore, we can conclude that this G is very close to one, and therefore we are clamped here to actually to the A open loop zero. Now the point of intersection is of course uh, when uh, the gain is equal to A open loop, and this is uh, this frequency here. So this is this breakpoint, and we are limiting limited at this level. So let's have a look now what happens if the open loop gain of the amplifier looks something like that. That is, it penetrates here. It is clear that we cannot have this section here because it is just too high of a gain as compared to the gain of the amplifier. Now the question is whether we are actually clamped to A open loop or whether there is a correction here. Now in this case, R3 over R1, which is where we are at, is larger than one. So therefore, G, which is R3 over R1 plus R3, is about one, R3 is larger than one. 
So therefore, again, we are going to be clamped to this A open loop. So this will be then the transfer function of the unit here, taking into account the A open loop of the amplitude. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it interesting and that it might be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.